the nervous system consists of two divisions the central nervous system or CNS which has two components the brain and the spinal cord the function of the CNS is integration meaning processing of information the other division of the nervous system is the PNS or peripheral nervous system which consists of specialized neurons called receptors and then wires called nerves some of these wires come from the brain and they're called cranial nerves another set of wires come from the spinal cord and they're called the spinal nerves so this is the division the PNS peripheral nervous system which is found throughout the body and its job is to gather information using specialized neurons called res uh, receptors and send that information to the central nervous system the brain and the spinal cord via cranial and spinal nerves the brain and the spinal cord are going to integrate the information received evaluate it and if a response is needed it will make use of the wires the nerves of the PNS to send a response that will be acted out by organs in the body called effector organs so the PNS gathers information sends that information via PNS nerves to the central nervous system central nervous system evaluates the information that's called integration and if a response is needed it will be sent out via nerves of the PNS to organs throughout the body which we're going to call effectors so as you can see the PNS actually consists of two parts one part which sends an input into the central nervous system the other part is going to deliver an output to organs throughout the body now keep in mind the input is gathering information from uh, inside the body from outside the body and that information is being sent to the central nervous system if a response is needed the PNS nerves will carry out the um, command output to effect your organs throughout the body so as we mentioned before the nervous system consists of the uh, CNS which includes the brain and the spinal cord and we said the function of the CNS was uh, processing information which is also called integration the uh, PNS on the other hand had two components uh, the sensory component that gather information it is also called the afferent PNS division afferent a is for arriving this is the input aspect of the PNS the other uh, PNS division was the motor or efferent division
which was in charge of the output. Sensory or efferent division of the PNS relies on receptors to gather information that will be sent to the central nervous system via cranial and spinal nerves. Receptors come in two types, in three types. We have external receptors. Our external receptors will be uh, receptors that gather information from our environment. Uh, touch, pain, uh, temperature, um, vision, hearing, all these are external receptors. Another set of receptors are called proprioceptors. Proprioceptors gather information about the state of our skeletal muscles and our joints. So it is through proprioceptors that we know where our uh, feet are, even if we're not looking at them. The third type of receptor uh, are called interoreceptors. And as the name implies, these are the type of receptors that gather information about the internal environment of the body. Uh, pH, oxygen concentration, blood pressure, uh, carbon dioxide concentration, etc. So as you can see, there are two different sets of receptors. One set of receptors gather information about the external environment and about the state of our mu skeletal muscles and joints. And these could be very important receptors because they could be gathering information that could be crucial to survival. If you think about it, if you're being chased by a bear, your extra receptors and your proprioceptors are going to immediately send that information to your central nervous system. Uh, proprioceptors will be needed to tell you where your feet are, where your, uh, your leg muscles are getting ready to run. So this information, this crucial information, is sent to the central nervous system via what we call the somatic sensory division of the PNS. which is very different from information from the internal environment. Uh, so extra receptors and proprioceptors uh, gathers information that allows us to function in the world and to respond to the world. Interoreceptors, on the other hand, are gathering information about the internal environment, about what's happening inside our bodies. And this is what we call the visceral sensory division. Of the PNS. So we are very much aware of the somatic sensory uh, information being sent. I are not aware of the visceral sensory information being sent. On the other hand, the motor or efferent division of the PNS, um, this is the output. So the information arrives at the central nervous system and is going to be evaluated. And if a response is needed, the response will be sent to organs that are not part of the nervous system. Uh, these organs are called effectors. And there are four types. A skeletal muscle, which as you know, are voluntary muscles. A smooth muscle, which is found in organs like uh, the uh, stomach, the intestines, blood vessels, uh, urinary bladder, etc. Cardiac muscle, which is uh, makes up the heart. And as you know, both smooth muscle and cardiac muscles are involuntary. And glands. Glands can be exocrine glands, like uh, sweat glands or salivary glands and or endocrine glands like um, hormone secreting glands the pituitary gland the adrenal gland etc so you can see how smooth muscle cardiac muscles and glands are effectors that are involuntary we cannot control 
whereas skeletal muscles are effectors that are voluntary. So there are two divisions within the motor or efferent PNS branch. One division is going to consist of neurons that are very quickly sending commands to skeletal muscles. We call these the somatic motor division of the uh, PNS. On the other hand, another set of uh, commands are going to go to involuntary effectors. We call that branch the visceral motor or more often than not, we call it the autonomic nervous system. Uh, we use the acronym ANS, autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system in turn has two branches. It has the sympathetic branch and the parasympathetic branch. Now what this means is that most organs in our body are going to be innervated by two sets of nerves. So the heart, the stomach, um, the intestines will be innervated by two sets of, of uh, nerves, a sympathetic nerve and a parasympathetic nerve. One of these will stimulate the organ, the other will uh, inhibit or stop the function of the organ. So it is similar to the pedals in an automatic car. In an automatic car, one pedal accelerates, the other pedal is going to stop. Similarly, uh, parasympathetic and sympathetic branches in organs are going to accelerate or stop the organ. Here again is the organization of the nervous system uh, with PNS and uh, CNS um, divisions uh, clearly seen. So let's talk about neurons. Remember that uh, there are uh, different types of neurons based on what they look like, their structure, and based on their function, what they do. So based on their function, neurons can be sensory or they can be motor. So neurons can be motor or they can be sensory. Um, based on what they look like, they can be um, multipolar, unipolar, or bipolar. So, if uh, you remember, unipolar and bipolar neurons were sensory neurons. So, those are the kinds of neurons that are found in the sensory or afferent division of the PNS with the caveat that bipolar neurons are very rare. They're only found in two parts of the body. They are found in the retina of the eye and olfactory receptors in the nasal cavities. So essentially what we're looking at are unipolar neurons as the neurons that are found in the sensory division uh, or afferent division of the PNS, which means that the neurons um, that are taking information sensory information to the, C, uh, to the central nervous system are unipolar neurons. Now, if you can imagine these neurons as they take information to the central nervous system, their little bodies uh, are all gathered together in places within the body called ganglia. So ganglia are places where bodies of neurons are going to be found in the PNS. And in the case of sensory ganglia, these are going to be unipolar neurons. So the sensory or afferent division of the PNS, I call it the USA division. 
because it has unipolar neurons, it uses unipolar neurons, and it is the sensory or afferent division. On the other hand, the motor division. The motor neurons were uh, multipolar. So we have, these are gonna be neurons that are going to take out uh, the command, uh, the command, the output is going to leave the central nervous system and go to the effectors. So these are going to be multipolar neurons. And in the case of somatic motor multipolar neurons, these are going to be type A neurons, large neurons, highly myelinated. So these are going to be group A multipolar neurons that are going to carry commands to skeletal muscle. Notice that only one neuron uh, leaves, the axon of the neuron, of one neuron, leaves the central nervous system on its way to the skeletal muscle. In the ANS division of the uh, motor PNS branch, again, we're going to have multipolar neurons, but these are going to be group B and group C neurons. They're going to be multipolar neurons, group A, I'm sorry, not group A, group B or group C neurons, which means that they're going to be um, lightly myelinated or non-myelinated. Notice also that what I'm doing is I am drawing two neurons carrying this type of information. This is the myelination, lightly myelinated, so I'm just putting a little bit of myelination. Okay. Uh, so there's going to be two sets of neurons that are going to carry this uh, command, this output, to the um, involuntary effectors, cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and glands. So what that means is that there's going to be autonomic ganglia where the bodies of these little neurons, there's the body of the multipolar neuron that is receiving the information from these uh, previous neuron. This is the body right here of the neuron. So there's going to be autonomic ganglia throughout the body where that is housing the bodies of these multipolar neurons. Um, remember the ANS has two branches, sympathetic and the parasympathetic branch. And notice that I have put these neurons, sympathetic and parasympathetic, I have made the uh, synapses different in the sympathetic uh, part uh, branch, I have put the synapse between the two neurons close to the uh, spinal cord, and the parasympathetic, I have put the synapse between the two uh, ANS neurons far away from the um, spinal cord. So we're going to have um, autonomic ganglia in the body. Uh, we, I called the uh, motor PNS division the knee division. M for motor, E, M for multipolar, sorry, let me go ahead and do that again. M for multipolar, M again for motor, E for efferent. Once again, let's summarize the information in the other two PowerPoints. The nervous system has two components, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system consists of brain and a spinal cord. And its main function is integration. The peripheral nervous system consists of receptors, cranial nerves, and spinal nerves. And it has two divisions, the sensory or afferent 
PNS division and the motor or efferent PNS division. Sensory or efferent in turn division in turn has two components somatic sensory, which gathers information from external receptors and proprioceptors. And the visceral sensory, which gathers information from interoceptors. This is the branch that sends inputs to the CNS. The motor or efferent division, in turn, has two components the somatic motor, which sends commands to a skeletal muscle, and the visceral motor, or ANS, which in turn has two components, sympathetic and parasympathetic. And the visceral motor division is going to send commands to cardiac and a smooth muscle and glands. Okay, I want to go over the neurons and the classification of neurons. Uh, neurons can be classified based on their function. We call that the functional classification. Uh, we could also classify them based on what they look like, and we call that the structural classification. I'm going to try to put both functional and structure together in this slide. So structurally, we have three types of neurons. Uh, we have multipolar neurons. And multipolar neurons have uh, the body of the neuron, and uh, the body of the neuron from the body of the, the neuron comes one appendage, which is called the axon. And in multipolar neurons, the there is one axon, and it is a long, typically uh, comes from the body as one appendage. Now the axon can be very long, or it can be actually very very short, like in this little multipolar neuron right there. Okay, to where uh, in this little multipolar neuron, the axon is almost the same size as the dendrites. Okay. Um, also, we have uh, uh, unipolar neurons. And in the case of unipolar neurons, what we have is one appendage. That's what they call uni. Uh, there's only one appendage uh, that comes from the body. And... The body is to one side of the cell, and the single appendage extends on uh, from that uh, on both directions from that one body. Uh, one side of the appendage will act as a dendrite, and the rest of the appendage will be the axon part. Uh, these are what we call unipolar neurons. And in contrast with multipolar neurons, unipolar neurons have one dendrite. Multipolar neurons have many dendrites. So multipolar meaning many dendrites, one axon. Unipolar meaning one uh, appendage. The appendage acts as a dendrite and acts as an axon. OK, the last. Uh, type of neuron, the, the last is structural classification of a neuron, are the bipolar neurons. Uh, bipolar neurons, bi is for two. So bipolar neurons have two appendages. The body is in the middle of the two appendages. 
uh, one side is the dendrite and the other side is the axon. Uh, notice that all neurons have one axon. They could have one dendrite or many dendrites depending on whether they are multipolar, unipolar, or uh, bipolar. In the case of bipolar and multipolar, unipolar, there's only one dendrite. Um, let's see, bipolar. In the case of uh, multipolar, there are multiple uh, dendrites. The uh, bipolar neuron is a very rare neuron only found in two places in the body, in the retina of the eye and the nasal cavities. So this will be the structural classification of neurons based on what they look like. Now let's classify them based on function, what they do. And based on function, there are three classifications. Uh, some of these neurons are going to be motor, meaning they're going to take motor commands to effectors. These are going to be output neurons. Uh, another set of neurons are going to be sensory. Sensory neurons are input neurons. They gather uh, sensory information and take it to the central nervous system. There are two kinds of sensory neurons, unipolar and bipolar are both sensory neurons, except that again, bipolars are very rare neurons. So we are essentially looking at one type of sensory neuron most of the time, which is going to be the unipolar neuron. Uh, so multipolar neurons are motor, M for motor, I guess, and then unipolar neurons will be sensory neurons. Okay, the other function of neurons is um, association neurons. Association neurons are multipolar neurons that have a very short axon. Association uh, is the function. Association or interneurons. This is the function of these neurons. These are exclusively CNS neurons. So they're found in the brain and spinal cord, and they act as the middleman, the intermediate neurons between motor and sensory neurons um, and they are as far as their structure association neurons as far as the structure are classified as multipolar neurons now some books may call them anaxonic neurons and i do have a problem with that because the term anaxonic means no axon and that's not true these neurons do have an axon right there. That's the axon. Uh, they just have a very short axon that may look like dendrite, but it's not. It's an axon. So we're going to say these are both multipolar neurons. Motor neurons and association neurons are both multipolar. To give you a further idea of what the association neurons do, um, association neurons receive the sensory information that is being delivered by unipolar neurons. So this information may enter the spinal cord, for example. And so this is the spinal cord. And the um, interneurons receive that information and in turn deliver it a command to a multipolar neuron, which will be the motor neuron, that is going to take that information to a effector, let's say in this case, a muscle. Okay, so there's the interneuron uh, serving as the middleman between sensory and motor neurons. And the interneuron is always found in the central nervous system.